All right, welcome back. Joining me now, Senator, Senator Kevin Kramer of North Dakota. Senator Kramer, welcome. I just want to get your take on this uh, pre dawn raid in Mar a Lago. Is this a weaponization of the uh, alleged uh, legal beagles at the Justice Department of the FBI? How do you see this, Senator? Well, first of all, I think that the de Department of Justice is, uh, is to be um, feared by every American and have for a long time. I think they, the concentration of power that they have, the power they have even over individual agencies through their, you know, sort of the, this um, bank of lawyers that once they take on a case, the agency that they're taking it on for, that they're supposed to be working for, loses all control. So I've, uh, I've thought the DOJ should be busted up a long, long time ago. But this raid, particularly in the context of the times we're living in, uh, is, is very concerning. And, and Larry, you know, they could clear a lot of it up with just a lot more transparency. I know that's not a new argument, but show us the subpoena. Mm. For crying out loud, it's not like this happens every day. This, does, you know, this requires further explanation or else we're left to presume the worst. Well, show us the warrant. I mean, no one can see the warrant yeah. and whether the there's warrant, any right. Fourth Amendment uh, implications here. Uh, right. or I mean, the silence is just deafening. And I think that's adding to the problem. But, I mean, is there a double standard, as Greg Jarrett said a few moments ago? I mean, with respect to classified documents, Hillary Clinton walked away with them. James Comey walked away with them. Uh, and, by the way, the FBI had the Hunter Biden laptop for a long, long time. They didn't take any action. It just seems like a right. double standard. And it's really aimed at stopping Trump, isn't it? It's, they don't want to all. Look, you, you, just my view, OK? I don't want to get too crazy yeah. about this. But I think yeah. all this stuff, uh, they don't want Donald Trump to run for president again. Well, well, and here's what's sort of crazy. And I've often wondered about the motives of Democrats when they do these things. But... It is very unlikely that anything that they could come up with would prevent Donald Trump from running or being president. It looks to me like they're driving him right into the arms of the American people, at which point all of this history that they're creating for themselves is not going to endear them any more to the, to the future and former president, if that's the case. I, 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 for the life of me, don't understand their strategy, other than they're so fueled by hatred that they can't even let a former president just enjoy his, you know, his status as a, as a retired president. Mm. Let's uh, turn to one of the worst bills I've ever seen, and that's the Schumer Mansion uh, reconciliation bill, which mm. I label as pathetic. So let me ask you about the EPA, okay? We talked a lot about it. You and I were texting over the weekend. I appreciated that. Mm. How much new power and authority will the EPA have in the war against fossil fuels? Well, it's there's not a lot of quote authority per se, but there's a lot of money mm. and appropriations, and and a lot of it the EPA will oversee, a lot of it the Department of Energy will oversee, and anytime they ha you have money, you have power. Now, what what we were texting about over the weekend was sort of interesting because, as you recall, in last week when I was on with you and when Andy Wheeler was on with you, we pointed to very specific appropriations that were designed to regulate the power sector, for example, in certain parts of the code, which are absolutely contrary to what the West Virginia versus EPA ruling was. Ironically, Joe Manchin authors a bill that tries to give the, the uh, EPA more power over uh, West Virginia. That was all struck, uh, it was all stri stricken out. So Shelley Moore Capito and I both had amendments to directly address this. And before our amendments could even be voted on, the, the parliamentarian ruled those, those areas out of order. So from an authority standpoint, um, I think, you know, some decent work was done, but you just can't take $369 billion and spread it over a few agencies and expect there not to be some, uh, you know, some mischief to, that goes along with that money. Don't know if you saw the Wall Street Journal editorial today on this, but Bjorn Lomborg, who was a very well-regarded climate guy, climate scientist, he ran some numbers using the U.N. Uh, climate model and all this uh, money that's been plugged in uh, in this uh, terrible bill and said basically it will have no impact essentially will have no impact on global warming none nada now whatever four or five hundred billion dollars later nothing is changing except I would say the war against fossil fuels in the US continues and the EPA is going to be a leader no question about so to, to that point if the United States of America ceased to exist tomorrow, so there's no more coal, no more you know, traffic, no jet airplanes, no flagellating cattle, I mean, no, none of this awful CO2 going into the 
the into the air. First of all, the world would die of hunger. But beyond that, the temperature would make a difference of 0.3% forever. 0.3% if we didn't even exist. Hmm. So the Wall Street Journal editorial is absolutely right. This, Larry, we had a hearing last week in the Banking Committee that the Democrats put up called um, the economic impact of climate change. I changed it to the economic impact of climate change overreaction or climate hysteria. Mm. The real damage to the economy is the response to climate change. The, the reality is that the United States of America has been a leader in decarbonization, as you know. And the best way to decarbonize, or at least to reduce carbon in the global, global, remember, this is a global issue, um, would be to, to produce more American energy. And and export more American energy because we do it so much cleaner and better than anyone else. Yeah, I mean, that was that was Rick Perry's thought, I don't know, several months ago on the show. If we exported, you know, more and more and more LNG, exported, American LNG, right. the cleanest in the world, to China, to India, to Africa, we would do more to solve right. global warming instead of ending or destroying our fossil fuel industry. I mean, that was Rick's and point. Wouldn't that yeah, and wouldn't it be wonderful to have another area of trade surplus rather than be, you know, at a trade deficit with China and other countries? If food is one of the areas where we have a surplus, energy should be another one of those areas where we'd have a trade surplus. That is good for the world, and that's good for the United States, and it's certainly good for the free world. Thank you, Senator Kramer, Kevin Kramer. We appreciate it, sir.